Hey folks, we're back with our yet another demo and I want to show you a few other basics of Git, mainly branching in this case. So we've already set up our repository. We have it on GitLab. Uh, everything is set here. We have our readme file. Uh, so we're going to start having some fun and start working through some things. So the first thing I'll do is add some modifications to my readme. This is Markdown. You can look up the tools from Markdown. So I'm going to just put the title here at the top. I'm going to save that. You'll see that I now have modifications. I run my git commit minus am modified readme.md. Hey, remember a commit is simply taking a snapshot of your files at any given point in time. Now if I look at what I have, oops, typing incorrectly, git status, okay. There we go. Everything is commit, everything is clear. So let's suppose I have a task on this project. I'm going to go ahead and add a main.py file, a basic Python file, and I am going to edit that file. And I'm going to say some basic things. Import pandas as pd y equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. A very simple Python file, nothing special here. And I'm going to go ahead and say, great, I'm going to commit minus am added main.py. Okay. Oh, on track files, let me add this first, and then I'll go back and commit it again. Hey, so we're in good shape. Let's go ahead and clear our screen here. Um, so let's suppose that you're working in a group, and there's some different things that have to happen to this file. So we're going to have some fun here. So we're going to start making branches. The way we create a branch is using the checkout minus b command. We say git checkout minus b and give it a branch name. Um, we'll call this one new changes and what this does is it creates a branch and switches me over to that you'll see if I use the git branch command it gives me a list and gives me a star and this green highlighting for the current branch I'm on this is really nice because it allows us to isolate our changes separate our work for others uh, so you'll see all we have here is our readme.md and our main.py um, let's say we need to add another file we'll add other.py we'll git add other.py Great, git commit minus am added other.py. Great. So we are here and we are on my other or new changes branch. This is the beauty of branches. If I say git checkout master, and remember master is always my main branch, we switch to master. Hey, my other.py disappeared. And if I switch back, to new changes, my other.py is back. This is fantastic because it allows me to do work, uh, separate it from what is already working, and then merge it back in. So let's say I have some things to do here. Um, I am on the correct branch. I am on new changes. So I'll edit my main.py and let's make some changes. We'll change x and we'll add a 6 here. Uh, we'll also import numpy as np. Okay, git commit minus am. Made some changes to main.py. Awesome, here we are. Uh, so I'm done with my changes. I'm not going to do anything else. And I want to put those back in the master branch so that I can share them with everybody. So here's what I want to do. I want to go say git checkout master, and you can look, I have nothing there. Uh, the first thing we do want to do, by the way, I'm going to do a git push minus all, minus minus all, just so you can all see this. The all command makes sure that all branches are pushed. And if I go back to GitLab here, I can do some fun things. So first off, I can go look under the repository menu at branches, and I now have two branches. I can also look at a graph to see how development is progressing everywhere. You'll see that my master branch started down here and has moved up two commits. Um, and then from master, there were a couple more changes made to new changes. Uh, we can make this a little more interesting. I'm on the master branch. Let's do a git checkout minus b even more changes. Okay, so you'll see I'm on this new branch. Fantastic. Uh, and here we will say touch yet another dot pi git commit minus am added yet another dot pi oops git add git commit 
All right, we'll do another get push minus all. Remember, normally you don't need to use that minus minus all switch. That just makes sure that all the information from all of my branches are being pushed. Uh, so we'll go back here, we'll refresh the graph, and you'll see I now have this new changes branch out here as well. So my master points here, new changes is here, even more changes is there. There's all kinds of stuff going on here. Um, and we can even make this more interesting. We'll edit this and we'll change the name to Z. Git commit minus AM. Messing with files for fun. And see, uh, yeah, git push minus U. This minus U command is the same as this minus minus set upstream. Normally I would never give this advice, but whenever you see a command that says git push minus minus set upstream, just obey it. This is going to help you out. And what this actually does is it tells Git where it should be pushing the changes that you've made. Okay. So here we go. We can look here. If we refresh our graph again, you see I now have two commits on chain, uh, new changes. Master is going up here. Even more changes is two commits ahead of there. Fantastic. So we'll look at our branches and we'll go back to master. So let's say I've finished my work on new changes. So currently I am on even more changes. Git checkout master. There we go. So let's say I finished my work on new changes. I am on the master branch and to get my changes, all the things I've made in the new changes branch, all I have to say is git merge, git merge new changes. That means take all the changes from the new changes branch, look at the most recent commit, take those <clears throat> and bring them back into the master branch. So I would do new changes. Fantastic, this was a fast forward. And what that means is that there were no merge conflicts. There was no conflicting files. So this is great, that should be done. I'll do a git push and we should see up here some updates to our graph. Let's try that one more time. There we go. So you'll say new changes and master are now combined and even more changes is out ahead. Uh, so just to have some fun, let's see what happened in our main.py. Okay, we have X in there, it got rid of Y. Let's go ahead and clean this code up a little bit, make it look a little better at our spacing. Say Y equals one, two, three, four, five. Get commit minus AM. Now we've made some more changes. We'll push this. Great. Now we have one more thing to do. We're going to go ahead and merge our even more changes in to this master branch. So I'm going to say git merge even more changes. Uh oh, merge conflict. Uh, you'll see if we do a git status now, we'll have a merge conflict. New file, yet another.py, both modified main.py. So like, let's take a look at main.py and you'll see we have these unique markings. Head is our head pointer. It points to the very front of the current branch. Uh, and you'll see it uses this crazy notation, these left carrots followed by head. Then there's an equal sign and then it shows us some more changes. And this tells us that these changes below all these equal signs come from the even more changes branch. The reason that it uses all these equals and carrots are because that will break pretty much any programming language out there. So in this case, my plan is to keep all these. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of these comments. And there we go. We save that, right? And we look at git status. Fantastic. Git add, yet another .py. That's a new file. Uh, we'll add main.py. Uh, that's how we tell it when we're done with the commit. Fantastic. Or done with merging the changes. Git commit minus am. Finished merge. And here we are in good shape. So we can go ahead and do a git push. And you will see here, once we refresh our graph, that we now have all this stuff. New changes is still left behind, even though it's been merged. That's right where it was merged in. We have even more changes branch, and they've all been merged into master, and everything's come together right here at this head commit. This is fantastic. The last thing we want to know how to do is to tag a commit. So I'm here. I'm going to say I finished my changes. I'm going to create a tag. Git tag finished merging. Okay. 
And then we do a git push minus minus tags to make sure those get pushed. And if you reset, you will see master changes to finished merging. Uh, if you looked at this very carefully, you would say, see it shows finished merging and then master. And it gives you some things to look through. All right, that is it for today. We've talked about branching. We've talked about merging, resolving conflicts, and also tagging branches.